Who would like to take this one? It I is a, okay, it's a 65 year old man with rapidly growing ulcerated black nodule on the back. So at low power, I'm looking at um, a very cellular looking lesion that mm -hmm. seems to be well circumscribed for the most part. Um, uh, and then I'll, I can appreciate that ulceration that they were able to see grossly just kind of from the low power as well. Yes. Um, there's also a central area of um, very eosinophilic material, um, which on higher power I thought could be some cellular degree or maybe some necrosis. Yeah, I agree. They're um, like ghost outlines of dead cells here, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then also on higher power too, uh, the cells kind of look very spindly. Uh, Yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of pigmentation as well. Yes. Which I'm appreciating on low power and, and on higher power. Perhaps like metastatic melanoma. Okay. Maybe. Good. Um, any any other people want to add to the differential? That, nice. Angiosarcoma for this one as well. Yeah, spindle spindle cell angiosarcoma occasionally can uh, be really cellular and lack vascular channels. Usually, if you have a big specimen. A spindle and angiosarc, not always, but oftentimes, or same for epithelioid angiosarc, at the edges, you'll often see infiltrating channels. And so if you get a, a small sample, it can be really difficult. And that's why actually I usually include ERG or CD31 in my, when I'm looking at a malignant looking spindle cell tumor of the skin, I include like an AFX, atypical fibrous anthoma versus spindle squame versus other. I usually include a vascular marker because I've occasionally seen cases that didn't have any obvious vascular channels on a small shave and I would have totally missed it. So um, I do that and it's usually not that, but it, angiosarc is such a bad disease and, and needs the kind of a specialized management. So I definitely want to make sure I don't miss it well. Um, yes. Okay. And anyone else? I, I thought like what you said about like the AFX that maybe it had like a, the clinical history with like a rapidly growing thing and it was kind of nodular and like maybe I got a little bit of a collarette. Yeah. Too. Okay. Area of necrosis in the center made me like less convinced of that. Like, like it's a more high grade thing. Good. So, and when you, when you're thinking of atypical fibrous anthoma or the more aggressive kind of, uh, upgraded form of that is called pleomorphic dermal sarcoma, which is what we call AFX when it involves the subcutis or when it's bigger than like, I think two centimeters or when there's necrosis, vascular invasion, perineural invasion, all those things kind of make us say, okay, this is probably not an indolent AFX is probably a more aggressive pleomorphic dermal sarcoma. But what are the other main things in that malignant pleomorphic spindle cell tumor differential in usually in the sun damaged skin of an older person? Is AFX pleomorphic dermal sarcoma, I kind of lump those together because they look and stay in the same. And I think they are honestly the same thing. Just we give a different name based on if it has higher risk features. And what else can look like that? Spindle cell melanoma. Spindle cell melanoma. Very good. And don't forget spindle cell squamous cell carcinoma, which is actually quite common, right? Um, sp uh, squames can become sarcomatoid or are so poorly differentiated that they become spindled. And so I do a panel of stains and I have a video about AFX that you can watch to see. But basically I do, my general panel is a, a either a pan keratin or a high molecular weight like CK56. I've, I used to do pan, I started using 5.6 more. A nuclear marker like P63 or P40, which sometimes spindled squames lose keratin, but retain that. Although not everyone likes that because sometimes you get non-specific staining, but I still find it useful sometimes. Um, an S100 or a SOX10, I, in my hands, they work equivalently uh, for spindled melanoma. And the more spindled melanoma it gets, the more it tends to lose expression of its other melanocytic markers, the more specific ones like MART, um, also known as melan A, or HMB45. Not necessarily, but it can lose them. So I definitely have seen lots of spindled melanomas that are just S100 and SOX10 positive and have complete loss of melan A and, um, and uh, HMB45. And then people will send me those and say, I think it's malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. And then I tell them there's no way it's that. So, um, and then uh, I also, like I said, spindled angiosarc and I said spindle squame. And you could, some people include liomyosarcoma in the differential, but usually liomyosarcoma looks like liomyosarcoma. It has pink fascicles. Now I will point out that this tumor here does have fascicles. Look, it's got some pretty nice streamy fascicles. It's disorganized in a lot of places, but in, in areas it kind of really runs in fascicles and kind of pink cells. 
So this is a diffusely S100 and SOX10 positive and has some patchy MART1. So this is a spindle cell melanoma, okay? And with the necrosis and the atypical mitotic figures like you can see here, definitely bad news. So this is a good example of a very ulcerated spindle cell melanoma. When you look at it, it basically looks like a sarcoma, pleomorphic, ugly, high-grade spindle cells. Uh, that's the difference between spindle cell melanoma and desmoplastic melanoma. To go back to contrast, hypocellular divided by collagen. This is desmoplastic. This is spindle cell melanoma. Again, you can sometimes have both together. And then I would say it's a, a melanoma that's mixed desmoplastic and spindle cell type, and I would expect it to behave like a spindle cell melanoma despite having a desmoplastic component. You gotta have more than 90% of the, 90% or more of the tumor has to be desmoplastic to call it a pure desmoplastic. Okay, so um, that is a good example. And again, sometimes they will have an in situ component. Uh-oh, my browser froze. Oh, there it is. I've got too many windows opened, I think. Um, sometimes you'll have in situ, but like this one doesn't. And now why that is, we don't know. And someone, brought up metastatic melanoma, that's an important consideration when you have a ball of melanoma without any in situ component, you always have to think about a met. But sometimes big nodular melanomas and, and also particularly spindle cell and desmoplastic ones don't have any in situ over them. Whether that's because they used to and it regressed away or it ulcerated away, or we just aren't getting it in the particular cut, I don't really know. We don't really understand why that happens. But it is always worthwhile to think about and check if they have any history of a melanoma um, if you see a nodule of melanoma in the skin that doesn't have um, an in situ component, particularly if it's down deeper away from the epidermis, definitely rule out MET. The ones like this that are pushed right up against the epidermis and have a big ulcer, I feel like I see these lots of times. People think about metastasis, then the, the treating docs work them up and get scans and everything, and they almost never end up being a MET of unknown primary when they look like this. But it's still, I mean, worth bringing up and thinking about, um, definitely worthwhile, because a MET would get treated differently than a primary melanoma. Okay, and this would be going down into the subcutis, so a Clark level five, if you still use Clark level, it's not required anymore. And um, uh, uh, probably, surely more than four millimeters, or like probably 12, 15 millimeters, I don't know, but really bad. And it's pretty unusual, honestly, to see big zones of necrosis in cutaneous melanomas. I only see those in really big, bulky ones like this. Um, otherwise, necrosis is not really that common in a primary melanoma, um, unless it's really large. So. Bad, bad news, very aggressive, bad melanoma. And this one had a melanin pigment in it, but sometimes they're totally amelanotic and lack pigment here. There's good pigment like right that. here. Oh. Good melanin pigment there. Okay, so that can be really helpful.